Welcome to the DraftKings Daily Trot. I'm Jason Gilbo, J. Gilbo 11. With me is Russell Clay, at Russell J. Clay. Taking a look at tonight's 13-game slate, which features a ton of pitching, guys like Jose Fernandez, Jake Arrieta, but also features cores. So, I mean, uh, we have cheap pitching, so there is definitely a lot of different ways you can you can go tonight. Certainly a lot of different ways to go. Um, certainly some offenses you want to look at here. This is this should be an exciting night. Um, and, you know, we talked the other – there was a few days ago there was a 15-gamer where it was like there was really bad pitching. And it was like, yeah, this is going to be high-scoring slate. Well, there's going to be high-scoring pitching and hitting tonight. So there could be some uber, uber ni- lineups tonight. Yeah, it definitely could be. I mean, first one here you got Nationals and Phillies, Jake Thompson versus Tanner Rourke. Uh, Jake Thompson's a guy who's who's really kind of given up the long ball. He's given up a lot of runs over his first four starts there. Um, I, I like the Nationals' bats here, and, and obviously they are expensive, but I think they're great pivots off of guys like the Blue Jays off of cores. And, and in that ballpark, I mean, Citizens Bank is friendly for power. Yeah, it, and they are more than just a hedge off those teams, but at the same time, it's like – if if you're really if you throw me in a room and you make me give me a truth serum, I'm gonna be picking the Blue Jays over them. I'm gonna be picking the Dodgers over them. But um, I, I still like this lineup a lot. Obviously, you love Murph or Harp. Murph. Or, <laughs> See, Murph. Man? See, that's Murph or tough. Harpy. I told you it's tough to it's do. Tongue- yeah, it is. It's like a tongue twister. Um, anyway. Um, but I mean, even at those prices, I'm fine with paying up for them there. There's certainly a nice, nice pay up options tonight and I'm okay with Trey Turner, Wilson Ramos, again, a nice value. So yeah, certainly there. And we can't leave out my boy, Jason Worth. Uh, nice value there for sure. Yeah, God forbid you do that. I know, geez. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm in agreement. I, I like these guys. I mean, I even don't mind a Ryan Zimmerman at 3,500 and a GPP, um, for some reason, I mean, I, I think value, I mean, standpoint, you're, you're probably definitely going to need some low on guys that kind of hopefully can go off and, and cheaper bats to fit in, you know, the Donaldsons and, and the uh, Corey Seegers. I mean, you're going to need some some cheap guys. So I think Zero, even though in the bottom half of the lineup, I expect them to score a ton of runs. So uh, I actually don't mind him tonight. Yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, as far as the Phillies go, um, well, you know, we, we kind of were in agreement. We're not the biggest fan of Tanner Rourke, but we do think Tanner Rourke's going to be solid enough to kind of keep yeah. us away from the Phillies. Um, and and the they're priced up. Bad. You, okay, they're, so not you and, they're not good either. I, I don't necessarily like these. I'm okay with Michael Franco at 37, but overall it's going to be tough for him to compete with the third baseman tonight. And I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, who are you seeing here? Oduba Herrera at 42, kind of a he, guy you like? Yeah, he was the one I was looking at. That that wasn't that price. Now, as you mentioned, I mean, Mike Franco, really stiff competition at third base. So probably a guy you're not looking to dive down to anyway, um, even though he is one of the better values. Uh, but, yeah, I, I mean, obviously Hernandez and Herrera are probably the guys I'd take a look at. But the prices aren't great, but they're not bad either. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I'm fine with Herrera. Um, but, yeah, overall, not in on this Phillies lineup. No. Uh, Blue Jays and Orioles next here. Wade Miley versus Marco Estrada. Um, obviously, the, the Jays are expensive, and they're going to be a, a popular play tonight. In Camden Yards against Miley, a, a, you know, a pitcher they've hit well over the past, uh, a guy who allows a ton of home runs. So for me, I mean, I'll feel free, free firing away with all these guys. Um, and, and obviously, Donaldson and Carnosco and Bautista are kind of the, the honorable mentions, but uh, too low. I mean, Russell Martin, reasonable prices. Even a, a Pilar or Upton, I don't mind. Uh, I'll be, I'll be surprised. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that this line came out at five and a half projected for them, not six. I, I just feel like this is an amazing matchup for them. I, and it's not like the uh, they are away from home, but it is still a great matchup and ballpark for them. So, I, I love it. Um, Encarnacion at five. I'm in. Um, Batista at 48, Donaldson 52. Let's fire away with that. It's not even killing you. It's not like they're all 53 to 55. So sure, yeah, I'm I'm in. I'm in on Tulo. In on Martin. Let's do this. You know. Yeah, no, I think the Jays are gonna be a, a stack that that's worthy of looking at, even at their prices. I mean, you you have to pay down at pitching to get it, which is still fine with that upside tonight. Um, on the Orioles, I do feel like a little bit that they're overpriced, um, but I still certainly don't mind them in a tournament fashion. Um, 
curious to see what, how they handle the Adam Jones injury. If, if who kind of shifts up in top of the lineup there, if anyone like a, a JJ Hardy or a scope kind of come up, I don't mind those guys for, for somewhat value prices. Yeah. Not going to be your most fun plug into the lineup, but I certainly agree that that that's definitely a possibility that that might end up happening for me. Um, Chris Davis, interesting tournament guy, especially with a lot of the competition at first tonight. I think that could be a nice contrarian way to go. I think he has some good odds against Estrada here. Um, Hunsu Kim, I like him at 39, but yeah, overall I agree. A little expensive for Machado Trumbo tonight. Yeah, I think so, and I think that's what's going to keep me off of the Orioles just a little bit there. Yep. Uh, Rays and Red Sox next here, and, and the Red Sox value, I actually don't mind some of those other bats because you got a lot of 3K guys like Brock Holt, 3,400, should be leading off yet again with Dustin Pedroia out. Um, even a Hanley at 4-2, Travis Shaw, 3-4. And the back half, I mean, Chris Young and, and Sandy Leon, both in the mid-threes. Because we're kind of dealing with a course slate and a lot of expenses, expensive offenses, I, I don't mind getting the value here on, on uh, DraftKings because FanDuel, there wasn't really quite a value. It was kind of all high-priced guys. No, and, and I think with this, if you do want to go at entries, um, you can do a Holt, you know, Ortiz bets, and I'd be totally a cool, cool with that. Or you know, Holt Bradley um, bets, or you know, one of one of those three. I, I th I'd say this is a nice three person stack um, in this lineup tonight. I don't know how much potential they have, but I could certainly see you know a few home runs coming from this lineup. Yeah, I definitely, definitely think it's it's not going to be a, a big blow up, but I, I mean, I, for the prices, I think there will be enough there, and it's enough leeway there where they can allow you um, to get exposure to to Josh Donaldson and and those type of bats. Yep. So, uh, as far as the Rays go, uh, I'm not really looking to use anyone here. They are cheap, but you know, look at Brad Miller, 4200, and we usually like him against you know righties. In consideration to other. Um, short stops, I think he's going to fall a little bit short for me. Yeah, and Kiermaier, 31's intriguing. I I'm okay with him as a punt, but overall, I'll probably staying away from this lineup overall. Yeah, I think so. I mean, Corey Dickerson, couple of doubles, couple homers. I mean, uh, mm. could be coming around in GPP, 3,500 if he sneaks up into the top half of the lineup. But Fenway, I mean, not the greatest place for left-handed power, but um, it could be worth a look there. Definitely. Uh, Twins and Indians next here, Trevor Bauer, Hector Santiago. Um, the Indians' prices are certainly reasonable here. Um, I mean, guys like Mike Napoli at 4,200. Lindor is a guy who I like over Miller at 4,200 as well. You look at Santiago, I mean, uh, a lot of home run potential for some of those right-handed bats, 1.74 home runs per nine to righties since yeah. last season. Uh, I like some of the Indians here at these prices. Yeah, Napoli kind of takes out a lot of – a huge chunk of that first base range for me at 42. I love that value. I think he's got a great shot at a homer tonight. Um, so certainly looking there. I mean, as far as a guy like Brandon Geyer goes, I don't think I can dive down there for 4,500. But Lindor certainly intriguing. You know, Jose Ramirez, I can certainly see some appeal to. Um, but Napoli's really the main guy in this offense for me. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, Brandon Geyer, a little up there. I mean, I was kind of hoping he'd be a nice value, but certainly in play, but I think more in GPPs at 4,500. Yeah. So as far as the Twins go, I mean, we some decent decent upside here for some cheap prices. I mean, obviously, Kepler and Dozier are expensive, but, uh, you know, guys like Miguel Sano, I don't even mind. I mean, Jorge Polanco, if you need to dive down. I mean, Sano certainly got some upside. Obviously, he struggled of late, but... Um, you look at Bauer, I mean, uh, I'm not necessarily buying that he's going to have a great outing tonight, uh, although Vegas does expect it. Um, I, I kind of like the Twins as, as GPP plays for their upside. Agreed, especially Kepler. Let's do this. Kepler was the Gary Sanchez before Gary Sanchez, and he kind of just got totally overruled. So I'm ready for a Max Kepler night. It certainly could be. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. Let's I mean, go, Bauer, Max. Bauer's pretty average against lefties. Bauer's so up and down. I mean... He does have that blow up potential, so I, I think the Twins are viable GPPs. Mm -hmm. so, uh, moving on here, White Sox and Tigers, Matt Boy versus James Shields, and uh, you and I, I mean, both in agreement that we expect another Shields blow up here, much like we saw earlier this season when he faced Detroit. And as far as mid price goes, I mean, you do have guys like Kinsler, Mabe, and Victor Martinez, but you also do have Miguel Cabrera and Martinez, both over five K, competing with a lot of other names. Um, but I obviously like this team one through six. 
I'm going. I'm not. I'm not scared of five four with with Miguel Cabrera tonight. I I think that's plen- That's that's a pleasant price. Let's do it. Um, obviously there's a, he's competing. You know, with a lot of other pay up options, but he's certainly in my top three to five. You know. Yeah, it certainly is for me too. I mean, one is his history against Shields is very solid. Obviously, his track record against righties, I mean, phenomenal. Yeah. And, and you just look at what Shields is doing to both sides of the plate. It, it does put really all these bats in play. Yeah, eleven home runs allowed in his last four outings. That's like I don't know that I've seen that. You know, I don't even think I could do that. <laughs> one because I just I probably pitch way too slow. It throw everyone off. I, I I've wondered like. If I just went up there and threw my like seventy mile per hour fastball, like I'd imagine some of them would just be pop ups, right? Even in the home run derby, they don't hit them out every time. So no, they don't. No, because it's in. You know, obviously, I think I'd want to come in in relief. You get a guy who's got, throwing a nice ninety five miles an hour. Then they come in and see me who's throwing seventy. That's a twenty five mile hour difference that they got to adjust to. I got a sneaky little two seamer, so uh, I've also been working on my knuckle curve. Well, last time I worked on it was about fifteen years ago, but I got a nice little knuckle curve coming. It's, so. it's in the waitings. It's in the it's waitings. Coming down, coming down the pipe. So we'll <laughs> see. Yeah, I, Shields is definitely the blow up potential of the night. Tiger stack, Tiger's options and cash and GPPs one through six. Yeah, for sure. Uh, as far as the White Sox go, uh, you know, I, I don't mind some of the values here like Abreu, Melky Cabrera, and Todd Frazier's price is much more reasonable if you did want to do a spinoff uh, in terms of GPPs. I, I like his upside. I mean, uh, outside of this team as a whole, probably not so much as a stack. I think it's just kind of more one-offs with those three. Yep, I agree. Um, I like Abreu. I'm okay with that. Um, overall, I think we can limit exposure to White Sox for a little bit tonight. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, Marlins and Mets here next, and um, this one for me very similar to Fanduel. I'm not looking to use anyone here, uh, and I, I mean, D Gordon. I know you liked on Fanduel. Is the price a little up there for here? For no you thanks. Here? Yeah, they made it very easy for me to just be out on this lineup. Um, certainly, there's contrarian, you know, inklings with this Marlins lineup, but overall, I, I don't, I don't need to do that, especially in cash. Um, and obviously, no Mets tonight. Just don't do that. Nope. I mean, they're possibly without Cespedes and Walker. Um, that makes that lineup just incredibly weak as it is. Um, you know, get your Fernandez shares if you're looking to pay up at pitching. I think that he's the guy. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, Cardinals and Brewers here. Um, Brewers are fairly cheap, but I, I'm with you in agreement that I, I do like Martinez tonight quite a bit. Um, I'm really looking to stay away from this team at their current prices. Yeah, so much upside with this Brewers team for pretty much any pitcher right now. And you love Martinez, um, righty on righty versus lineup, basically. So fire away. Uh, I'm not afraid of Scooter Gannett, you know, getting to me. So I, I like I like Martinez and Cash tonight. Yeah, I definitely do too. And, and on the Cardinals side, I feel like Carpenter and Moss don't register as guys I want to pay up for. I, I certainly find them to be fine contrarian, you know, plays. It, it's a decent matchup for him, decent park. Um, but they just kind of rank really outside of the, the five, you know, in their positions that I feel like using. Um, maybe Moss in the outfield in a GPP, but I think that's really all I might go. Yeah, he's kind of bumped off it at first base um, just because of the other options we've been talking about. But um, I think they are nice hedges in tournaments, but they're not number one options. They're not number two options. They're not number three options at their position tonight for me. Um, certainly hedging around that top five area, but what does that really mean, you know? So I do like them as tournament guys. If you're doing like 10 lineups, not, not afraid to get exposure to them, but they are boom bust. Yeah, it certainly are. Uh, Pirates and Cubs next here. Jake Arrieta versus Stephen Brault. Um, obviously, we can rule out the Pirates, which I know you're excited about. It doesn't, yes. it doesn't make you consider them tonight. No, thank you. Goodbye. See ya. <laughs> Arrieta and Cash, good night, Pirates. Yeah. But the Cubs' price is actually not that bad in, in comparison to some of the other offenses. I mean, outside of Bryant, these are kind of reasonable. I mean, they're still, you know, price like they're they're still decent prices but in consideration of what they actually usually are mid 4ks aren't that bad for this team facing a a pretty mediocre lefty so i think my plan is to get my chris bryan exposure on fanduel 
obviously, if you don't play FanDuel, you, you want to get some exposure to him here. Um, but I just think paying 400 less for Donaldson is, like, the move, you know? What, what, do, you, what do you think? Here's the thing. I could throw Chris Bryant in the outfield and throw Donaldson at third base. Well, there you go. If you want to do that, that's fine. Um, but that's going to be a tough lineup to uh, – to maneuver, but overall, hey, if you want to do that, I think it's it's basically the top two bats of the night, so I'm cool with that. Um, but at third, I do like Donaldson um, more for 400 less, you know. Yeah, I definitely do too. And and I actually, I mean, I really like the rest of this lineup. I mean, Rizzo is an interesting first base option. I mean, he's mm-hmm. handled lefties well. Dexter Fowler at four five, Zobrist at four six, and even guys like Addison Russell or Javier Baez. I mean, uh, I think there's certainly reasonable price tags for those guys. Yep, and I do like Bryant tonight. He's priced up at fifty six hundred for a reason. Um, so Bryant's in a lot of a lot of trouble here. I, yeah, think. I think. I think so too. Yeah, <laughs> definitely a solid uh, Cubs prices. I think the value is is really there. Mariners and Rangers next here. You Darvish versus Hisashi Iwakuma. Um, as far as the Mariners bats, I mean, I'm not expecting a ton of production. There might be some one off power there, but on a thirteen game slate, I just don't feel like picking on Darvish. I think we've already highlighted other offenses we want to target. We haven't even gotten to cores yet, so um, I'm, I'm kind of just kind of writing away with uh, the Mariners offense. Cano's like right on the edge there where I might think about him as a deep tournament guy, but I'd much prefer that at like 41. You know, at 45, it just feels like you're reaching a little bit um, against a guy like Darvish, who's a really quality um, arm. So I- I'm taking the night off from the Mariners, I think. Getting get, getting exposure elsewhere and, and sort of figuring it out, you know? Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And, and on the other side, I mean, I, I really don't mind the Rangers. Um, bats here, and, and they actually come in some decent values. And, I mean, really, you, you look at... You look at Iwakuma, I mean, he's been pretty average in, in Texas and against his Texas offense at times. Uh, for the prices, I, I, I do like them probably more so in GPPs, uh, but you can make a, a, you know cash games for, for guys like Luke Roy or, or Beltre or Odor. Uh, probably not so yeah. Beltre just because of the position, but um, guys like Beltran at a decent price, even though he's been struggling, 3300 I'll take a shot at that. Definitely, definitely will take a shot at that. I love that price at 33. Um, I mean, that's really the main guy, right? He's basically a thousand less than everyone else in the lineup. And I, I actually feel like he's got one of the better matchups for splits. Yeah, I mean, splits wise, I think he saw and I think because he's been struggling really is why the prices kind of really dropped down. But I mean, in that ballpark, I mean, Iwakuma is not the most consistent guy and, and is kind of average numbers against lefties. I, I'm okay with tossing them in. Certainly. Uh, A's and Astros next here, um, Sean Manea versus Joe Musgrove. And once again, I mean, for the A's, uh, Stephen Vogt is, is a solid catching option in cash and GPPs and great value, especially if Musgrove kind of continues that trend uh, that he's shown the last two starts. Um, Vogt and Chris Davis are, are the only two I really take a look at. Agreed. Um, and, and really only vote for me. Uh, obviously like this matchup for him. Uh, so going to fire away with that, hoping Musgrove continues on this trend. But even if he does, I don't see them doing that much damage. Just really vote for me. Yeah, definitely. Definitely agree. Uh, as far as Houston goes, I mean, I, I like grabbing the value here. Um, I mean, Evan Gaddis at 4-4 is not quite value in terms of catcher, but I do like him in consideration to the other names. Alex Bregman, 4,100, I'm more taking a shot on. and I may even take, take some punts here in the back end um, I, against okay. Benea. So I'm not crazy? Yeah, I, I think I'm with you on that. I, I think some of these prices are super intriguing. Um, Garel, um, Hernandez, I mean, you're looking at those guys at 24 and 25. If if they're batting, you know, 6-7 or Marwin, I, I think they're all in play tonight. So um, as far as Altuve and Springer goes, I don't know how I feel about paying up for that. Um, I like Bregman, Correa, if you're looking at the top of the order. But yeah, Gaddis, Garel, Hernandez, um, I'm in on that. Yeah, I'm really okay with punting a spot with those guys there um, to kind of fit in some other bats. I think it's it's a viable mm-hmm. option just because of, of how the slate kind of shakes out. Um, you know, because if you do want to lock into Fernandez and, and Donaldson and not want to be completely just, you know, handcuffed to to taking value the rest of the way, you can, you can certainly look to punt that route. Um, yeah, and I, I think Fernandez is probably the guy who I'd be looking to do that with. I when you start diving down at third base, it starts to get tough because you want to use Bryant and you want to use Donaldson, probably the most. Yeah, you want. pretty you, much every lineup. 
yeah, so it's it's tough to go that route, but I certainly think it's a viable option. Yep. So, uh, Yankees and Royals next here. Uh, Dylan G versus Michael Pineda. And I, I kind of stand firm on this game. It's not one I, I personally that I want to target. Um, I mean, the Royals are cheap. Um, you can make that case for them. But, you know, outside of, of really no one here that I want to use, actually. Perez is, is a little expensive for my taste. Same thing with Gordon. Um, Hosmer, I mean, with Napoli right there, i kind of rather go other options. Oh, Gary. 47. Oh, Gary. Remember when he was like 25? Those first few days, that was. If you missed that, that, I'm sorry. That was that was a lot of fun, man. Yeah, uh, it's, but this, this is this, they're making it hurt now, which I, I mean they should, because he's hitting a home run almost every day now. So, uh, yeah, I'm out. I'm I'm not touching either of these teams. Although I will say, I think Brett Gardner's intriguing at four. Aaron Hicks at 37, sure. Um, even even at Teixeira, you're going to get low ownership on him. So I'm okay with those guys, but they're not cash or anything. No, I don't think so either. And the matchup against G is certainly not bad. Um, I mean, he struggles against both sides of the plate. Um, it's just more the park factors. Park factors, and it's always these Kansas City games in Kaufman really don't give you a, a huge amount of upside. Let me clarify: I'm not fading Gary Sanchez. I just don't think he's a good value. No, I so don't think he's you a good can value. you can get exposure, but I, I I wouldn't get a lot of it. Uh, Dodgers and Rockies next here. Kenta Maeda versus John Gray. Uh, some of these Dodgers prices aren't too bad. I mean, Gonzalez 4 rake, Rendall yeah. 4 6. Reddick 4K. We talked about Reddick possibly being an option to bounce back here at a cheap price if you're kind of hoping for that rebound game because it really hasn't happened in, in with the Dodgers as him being kind of that, that usual decent right handed or uh, left handed hitter. Yeah, Seeger 5 5. That's pretty cheap. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I do agree. There, there are some values in here. I think, uh, kind of like, kind of like with Fanduel here, we're kind of looking at Josh Reddick. This is such a good spot, even though there has been some struggles. He's shown some signs of life of late. So I think at 4K against against the righty in Coors, sure. Uh, g- give me some Josh Reddick. Give me some Jock Peterson. I'm not afraid to go down in this lineup tonight. Um, um, Grandall at 46 too. Not a bad value. Yeah, I'm definitely in agreement. And and with the Rockies, I feel very similar to how I did on FanDuel, where, sure, I'll, I'll make a lineup with them in it to get some exposure, but they're not going to be probably a future part of my core tonight. Um, yeah. One, Maeda has held them in check. And, and not saying that they can't. I mean, obviously, this is the fourth time they see him. Maybe this time they get around to him. But that's why you kind of want to maybe get some exposure in one lineup. But they rank far low below everyone else for me in terms of, of a lot of other offenses. Definitely. So. But you know who to do it with. Blackman, Gonzalez, Arenado, Dahl, even Apara if you want some value there. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Reds and Angels next here. Matt Schumacher versus Dan Straley. Um, Billy Hamilton's price, 3700 sure. Adam Duvall, 4300 sure. But um, I like Schumacher at home. I think he has a decent shot to kind of hold this offense in check um, and, and have a decent start. Um, and so I'm not really looking to use Reds, and I'm not really looking to use Angels either. Yeah, I don't. I don't really like this game. I'm okay with Pujols at uh, 36 and Calhoun at 33. Overall, though, not a game I'm looking to get tons of exposure to. No, definitely not either. That's gonna wrap things up with the DraftKings Daily Trot. Be sure to check out DaveFantasyCafe.com for all great tools and content.